Hi, welcome to part two of Getting Started in Magic's Music Maker 2019. In part one, we saw how to get Music Maker 2019 installed, updated, old and new versions activated, and sound pools, instruments, presets, and features downloaded and installed. We also took a look at the various parts of the user interface, including program and project settings. If you're new to Music Maker and have either not yet installed it or have installed it but don't have any instruments, sound pools, or features, watch part one first. In this part, we'll look at what a project is, the demo project, moving around in the arranger, audio drivers, the big yellow bar at the top, and exporting. In parts three through six, we'll look at various types of objects, such as audio files, MIDI objects and files, loops, and video files recording MIDI and audio, objects and tools, handles, cutting, looping, mouse modes, etc., moving around the screen, and various useful screens like the mixer and mastering. Let's look at a project. When you open Music Maker, you have a few choices. Create a new project, open an existing project, and open a demo song. I'll click on the button to open an existing project, select the pop-down, and I see a list of my recent projects. Note that the extension on these is .mmm. This MMM file is a Music Maker project file. Alternatively, click on the folder to navigate to and open a project that is not on the list. I won't open anything just yet. The third option has a couple of demo projects that can be opened. I'll open one of the demo projects, charthits.mmm, so that you can see what a project looks like. So, what is a project? It's a compilation of audio clips, MIDI, video clips, and more, placed on the arranger, and everything that you do to them to create a song. Basically, Music Maker is a project editor. The project file with the extension .mmm remembers all of what you do in the project so that you can close Music Maker and reopen the project in another session later on to continue editing. Music Maker is a non-destructive editor for the most part. It uses audio, MIDI, and video files, but it does not change the original file. If you import an audio clip or a song, for example, and then cut it up into little pieces, delete a couple of pieces, add effects, etc., none of this touches the original audio clip. Thus, audio and video files are not really imported into the project file. Music Maker only uses these files, remembers where they are, and what you want it to do in the project. Music Maker will always need access to the original files, so don't delete them or move them after importing them into Music Maker. You are only importing the file name, not the file itself. So a Music Maker project file contains the set of instructions to build your audio project. The only exception is that if you create MIDI objects in the project, that information is actually stored in the project file because a MIDI object is itself just a set of instructions. In this demo project, the arranger is full of objects. By default, the entire project is shown horizontally, but vertically there may be more tracks. Use the right scroll bar to move up and down. Remember the free version only has access to eight tracks. If you've paid for more, you can add tracks under File, Settings, Project Settings. At the very left of the arranger is the track header. There's some instrument images shown. Place the cursor over one and a message pops up to either select MIDI instruments by clicking on the instrument icon or to change the image by right-clicking on it. Just to the right is more information. For each track, there's a toolbar with buttons for solo, mute, record, and effects. Just below is the name of the track. You can change this. And there's also the track number. In this demo file, at the very top of this column is a pop-down button with pitches. This is not in the free version. To the right, on the tracks in the arranger, are the objects. This is where you build your project. At the top of the arranger, is a yellow bar and a grid counter showing bars and fractions of bars. If you right-click on the grid counter, you'll see options to change the grid. 
These same options appear if you click on the timer in the transport control. The yellow bar at the top is a range bar or loop bar. When you play back the project, Playback will start wherever you place the playback marker and play to the end of the yellow bar and then loop back to the beginning of the yellow bar. So if I move the beginning and end of the yellow bar and playback starting from just before the first marker, you can see the effect. Of course, if you place the playback marker beyond the yellow bar, playback will continue until you stop. Another use for the yellow bar is for recording. Recording audio will start at the beginning marker and keep recording until you stop. However, if there's something on other tracks and you're monitoring these with earphones, playback will loop these when the playback marker reaches the end of the yellow bar. Double-clicking somewhere on the line of the yellow bar will cause it to cover the entire project. Notice that there appears to be no way to go to the right past the last object of the project. I can't use the horizontal scroll bar at the bottom to go to the right. It won't go there. Grab the yellow bar with the left mouse button held down and drag to the right. Now you have more space at the right. I'll scroll back to the left. The objects are somewhat squished together. At the bottom of the arranger window is a horizontal scroll bar and to its right are some buttons. The minus button makes everything smaller, so it's zooming out on the arranger. The plus button zooms in, and now we can see the objects much better. Note that the scroll bar has gotten shorter, and that you can now scroll left and right to see more objects. Just to the left is a double-headed arrow. Pressing on this will show the entire project within the window, but horizontally only. To the left of this is a button with diagonal arrows on it. This zooms into a selected object. Click it again to go back out. To its left is Zoom with a pop-down button. Here you can see various presets for zooming and moving around in the arranger. Note that the vertical scroll bar also has plus and minus buttons that make the track height smaller or higher. You can also change the height of the track by dragging the interface between two tracks up or down. Right-click in the blank area of the track header and some options appear, including possibilities to adjust one or all track heights. At the upper right of the arranger, there's a small square. Clicking on this will show the window full screen. Now we no longer see the top menu. Click on it again to reduce it back. If you're really stuck, and some people have been, press on F4, and the windows will reset to the default. This is a demo project, and you don't want to make changes that will change this project. So if you want to play around with the demo project, go to File, Save as Project, navigate to where you want to save this, and give it a different name. I recommend saving all projects to the folder that we set for projects during installation, and as shown in Program Settings, Folders, Beside Projects. Now you can safely play around with this project. What happens if you can't hear anything when you press on the playback button or the spacebar? Click on the program settings gear in the top menu and go to the audio MIDI tab. Under audio playback are multiple choices. What to select depends on your setup. Try various selections. Since the demo project is just audio, try the wave driver. As soon as you select it, something should pop up in the pop down field at the very top like speakers uh, with something in brackets. Open the pop down. If you've plugged in headphones to your computer or laptop, they should now show up and you can select these. Close the settings window and try again. If still no sound, then go back to settings and try direct sound. This also produces something in the top field, so pop it open and select whichever one is appropriate. If nothing works for what you're using, make sure that your equipment works with Windows. If it doesn't, then it won't show up on the list. Now let's stay here for a moment. There's also ASIO. An ASIO driver is required to use the instruments. They reduce latency, which is, simply put, the delay that it takes from the time you press on a button on a keyboard until you hear it, or for voice recording, from the time you speak or sing until you hear it in your headphones. Depending on your equipment and setup, this can pose a problem. 
so a good ASIO driver is needed. Magix has some that come with Music Maker, but you can download and install ASIO for all. Lastly, there's the Wasapi driver, which is also an ASIO driver. Try selecting it and then the correct output device, headphones or speakers, from the list for the associated field. Now can you hear the playback? An important point here, Music Maker may take over your audio interface and block audio from other programs, like YouTube. You'll need a second audio interface card if you want to be able to play back audio from other programs with Music Maker also open. Good, I hope. When you finish your project, you need to export it to a final format. The Music Maker format, .mmm, is not a final format. It's a project file. Go to File, Export, and you'll see a list of possibilities. The most common are WAV and MP3. Click on the first option, Common Export Options, and you'll see more options with a better description. I suggest MP3 or WAV. We'll go with MP3. Clicking on it brings up a parameter screen showing a proposed file name and location and some options. Once again, I suggest that you export to the location determined when you install the program. See under Program Settings, Folders tab, beside Exports. Navigate to this location if necessary, or change what you want, and click on OK to export. Just do not mix up project files or export files with Windows program files. And by that I mean the Music Maker files that come under Windows programs. All should be somewhere under your documents or on another drive somewhere. Once exported, you can play your exported file in audio players and share it with others. This is, after all, the goal. This demo project is made up of sound pool loops that come with the demo, not the ones that are installed under sound pool loops. In the next part, we'll make our own project using sound pool loops. That's it for this tutorial. You should now have a basic understanding as to how a Music Maker project works, which audio drivers to select, and how to export to a usable audio format. Don't forget to save your project often. Thanks for watching. Till next time, make music.